In making the case for antinatalism, certain people have pointed to the uh, smirking fellow there over my shoulder, uh, the Buddha. And uh, one of his noble truths was, life is, to, is suffering, existence is suffering, to exist is to suffer. Well, it wasn't me who brought the Buddha into this. That's nothing more than a souvenir from one of my uh, visits to Southeast Asia. It's ironic because that's actually the Japanese Buddha, not the Southeast Asian one, but that's beside the point. Um, yes, the Buddha did say that, but if you want to bring that into it, what you're doing is you're bringing cosmology into it. And all right, I'm game. The antinatalists, if I understand their position correctly, hold that to exist is to suffer, therefore we need to cease to exist. So far I get that. Now, the way out, um, as far as I understand it in antinatalism, is voluntary self-extinction and non-violent self-extinction of the human race. That's all very well, but we know, or we think that we know, that our life evolved over a period of millions, billions, gazillions of years. The unfortunate thing is, the universe has forever. So, we auto-extinct as humans. Then what? Well, the process just repeats itself. Life, consciousness, the whole bit evolves all over again, auto-extincts again, and the process repeats itself literally ad infinitum. Now, I've widened the scope, the goalposts of this discussion deliberately, and I think that when you... I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to do when you consider the fact that the theory is ultimately, um, well, when you consider the implications of auto-extinction. Uh, <laughs> that's widening the goalpost quite a bit as well, saying that everything is ultimately futile. Well, okay, you understand what futility really is, don't you? Um, antinatalism and a puny attempt to end suffering by ending the human race is futile as well because the universe is the universe. Um, according to certain points of view, uh, consciousness evolved out of non-consciousness, which we don't know. This has been unproven. The usual case against fear of death is we don't know. We're not afraid of what happened before death. Therefore, we shouldn't be afraid of what happened after it. Well, okay, that's another way of saying that we don't know what happened before life. Therefore, we shouldn't be afraid of what happened after life, i.e. we don't know what happens after life either. We don't know what the connection is between the physical body or even the physical universe and consciousness. A lot of people have said that, well, we're getting awful close to solving that one, but that's getting awful close is not the same thing as actually solving it. And to say that it will happen in the near future is a leap of faith that I'm not willing to take, especially when the existence of the entire human race is at stake. Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea to base such um, all-encompassing philosophies or points of view on an axiom that has yet to be proven. We don't know what consciousness is. We don't know what sentience is. To say that we do is unproven. To say that we will is faith. No, thank you. Ultimately, according to this fellow, antinatalism itself is a cop-out because the universe is vast beyond conception. Consciousness is something that we don't know uh, enough about to say that we can end it somehow because we didn't begin it at some point. We don't know that for sure. I'd like to see someone explain to me how consciousness develops in the womb. <laughs> Good luck. Um, so, again, it's, it's interesting that the antinatalists 
play around with this idea of futility. But compared to this guy, um, they're giddy optimists, pretty much in love with existence and sentience. And there's another point of view, which is perhaps a little bit closer to their own, uh, a guy that looks a lot like this guy, but he's not him, by the name of Mahavira, and he is the founder of something that has come down to us as the philosophy of Jainism. Jainism might be a little bit more to their cup of tea, but Jainism itself um, doesn't say that auto-extinction is going to end anything either. Uh, the wheel of existence, according to the Jain cosmology, is something that never began spinning and will never stop spinning. Now, the wheel of existence can be taken literally or non-literally, but it's just a way of saying that the universe is infinite. Um, time, space, everything is infinite. And infinite means infinite. <laughs> so, we, uh, again, same thing. We auto-extinct, okay, another hundred billion eons go by, and the process starts itself again. In the face of infinity, a uh, hundred billion eons is less than that. So, again, you want to talk about futility? All right, let's talk about futility, shall we? Thank you.